G'day guys and welcome to MDC. Today we're going to be setting up the brand new Explorer rear fold hard floor. Alicia's going to be giving me a hand. We're going to show you how it's done, show you how easy it is to set up and pack up. Let's get into it, Leash. Mm -hmm. When you're opening up these hard floor rear folds, hook the winch on so that'll assist you when you're when you're letting it go over with the gas struts. And as Alicia's doing, don't forget to pull the spare around because otherwise the trailer's gonna hit on the spare wheel. Jump on the winch. So it'll start going by itself with the gas struts and the weight of the tent. If you've got two people, you don't have to use the winch. You can just have one person or both years on the back lowering the floor down, but with the winch, it just shows you how you can do it with one person. There we go, yeah, Leash, we're touch we're down. Ground, yep. It's a good idea to do the stabilizers after you've put the tent over because you want to get that floor level nice and level. If you do it beforehand, then it's hard to level it up properly. So you just want to make your way around the trailer and pull your canvas over the edge of the trailer. So this has canvas on the inside and the outside. So any water that comes down the outside, it actually goes over the edge of the camper trailer itself. It stops the water from going inside. So make your way around the whole trailer, even the back, and just pull that flap over. This is your tropical roof. You'll find this in your canvas pack that the trailer comes with. Slide the pole through here. And Alicia's going to put the pole through the other side. Nailed it. She's going to lie the pole down flat like that. This is the front of the camper. You want to go on the other side, we're just going to walk it over. Uh, just slide that pole straight into there. How are you going on your side, Leash? Yeah, perfect. Perfect, we're in? We're in now, yes. All right. So we just Velcro the, the tropical top on, on here now and press, press all the Velcro down to make it seat nicely. It's looking pretty good. Looks like it's made for it, hey Leash? Definitely, it looks really good. All right, undo these, the nuts, push out the poles. And we put in these corner posts. That just holds the tent up. You just want to tighten all these up. Once you've got the full tent stood, you can come back and adjust everything. It's just a matter of getting it up for now. You know what I love about this tent leash? Yeah, what's up? The height of it. It's so good, isn't it? So when much airflow. When I was over in WA, that's the difference. Like the height of this tent, like it's, the canvas is so far off above you. In the morning, you can sleep in that extra half an hour. No, definitely. <laughs> Let me get you a pole. Thank you very much, Lee. Stand these up in the corner. Look at that, we're done. It's a beautiful thing. It is. I don't think we even have to adjust anything. I think we've done a fantastic job. Now that we've got the tent up, we can finish 
attach in the tropical roof because if you attach it before you got the tent up then you're going to have to adjust it anyway so get the tent up and then just do the last two clips for the tropical top then you can pull it nice and tight and now this way every time you set up the tent the tropical top is going to be on there it's going to be tensioned it's going to be ready while i'm doing this i've got alicia over there just putting the walls together for the annex area i'm going to put the awning on put the walls and floor on the skirts the whole lot show you guys the whole setup and then we're going to pack it up again for you show you how easy it is okay when you actually open up your camper you're going to have all these walls separate Really good tip is if you actually put them all together, it makes it so much easier when you go to put it up. So a great little tip with your windows is if you open these up, especially if you're on your own, you can do this with your larger windows as well. Basically just pop them into a triangle. Lift up the end there. Now what that's going to do is also take quite a lot of canvas off here. So most of the canvas is in the middle. Makes it easier for you when you get it to the top there. Pop it into your little pockets. The pockets are actually there to try and keep the water away from where you're actually rolling the canvas. So pop that up there. That one up there. Nice and easy and you can do that for all the windows around the actual camper. So now we're going to put the skirt on, which is the bit that covers up the outside of the trail here. Basically keeps out all the creepy crawlies. Um, yeah, keeps the wind away. Keeps the wind away. It's also got zips and stuff in it so you can access your fridge slide, obviously your kitchen. So yeah, we're going to whack that on there now. Good thing to do as well when you're putting your canvas on, if you can get to both sides of the, of the Velcro, just push it together with your hand so it seats the Velcro. It's really strong stuff so if you get a good gust of wind, if it's well seated, it's not going to come apart. Tips and tricks, guys. Lay out your poles on the ground before you put your canvas on, before you put the awning roof on. And if you've got room, carry a little step ladder. It's going to make your life a hell of a lot easier. I've even backed the ute up at times to hook in the top pole, but a little step ladder is going to make the world a difference. If you've got room in the car, whack it in. All right, so I've got the hook pole here. Now this goes out to the apex of the awning. I'll put that through there and I'm hooking the hook through the eye that's on the inside pole and then you've got the little weather sock here. I'm going to tighten that up onto the pole. Just stops creepy crawlies walking up the pole and into your tent. Just let the pole hang then you can move on to the next one. So now we're going to attach the annex roof to the tent itself. This end's got the start of the zip and then you've got the velcro as well. So firstly I'll Engage this under the tent. And it's a heavy duty nylon zip, so it does slide along there quite nicely. But another trick is to grab a pole, just put it through the, the eye of the zip, and just push it along. Look at that, automatic zip. Oh, hello. <laughs> and then same thing again with the Velcro. Just seat it nicely onto each other and just work your way along. Make sure it's all nicely seated. And it's just gonna, if you have that seated nicely, your tent's just gonna sit so much nicer when you've when you um, put your poles in. I guess another tip too, Leash, is when you put these on, is to make sure that your wing nuts are pointing down. So they're not yeah, pushing up into your canvas. Definitely. Don't want to damage your canvas, especially right. if it's new. So on these poles, you have a little hole. You just got to remember that that is for the center pole because they're different lengths off the awning. So this is a different height. So this comes down further, the hole's further down the pole. These little elastic straps are just hooks, just stops your canvas from getting blown off the top cap. Also, in the kit, get these little, they almost look like a suction cap, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Little clear cap, looks like a suction cap with a hole in it. It's actually 
stops the water from running down the top of the pole and filling up in the bottom here. So you've got that spike going through the top of the canvas. When it rains, water can run down that spike into the inside of the pole. It'll come all the way to the bottom and it'll come out once it gets higher than that black cap and it'll put water inside your awning. So it's not a major drama if you don't have the floor in, but if you've got the floor in, you'll end up with water in your tent. So that's what those little caps are for. Just diverts the water off that little post, straight onto the canvas, stops the pole filling up. So I'm extending out this pole here. A good, a good trick is just extend it out so that the, the hole in the post matches up with the hole in the canvas and then your pole here is gonna be in generally the right spot. So just over to the front of the trailer here, we've got a spreader pole. Just popped it up on the top there. Make sure you always do the highest point first, just makes it easier. And then straight onto that bar. And that's just gonna keep your canvas nice and taut. So we've got a bit of rain here at the moment, so I'm leaving a bit of fall on this section here. So the water can, can bead off this way and it's actually taking the water away from the tent area and away from your drawers area and your fridge slide. So any water that comes off the top of the tent here is gonna come down this way and then basically go on an angle towards this pole and away from camp. As you saw earlier, we were putting all the walls together. It just makes it really easy to be able to put it up as one piece. So Kenna and I are just about to walk this around and then we'll be able to sort of put this all up in one quick movement. So obviously you've got to undo your hooks when you're putting your walls up. Start on your corners. If you start on the corner, then it's easier to line everything up. But it's, it helps to work together too, doesn't it, Leash, when you do this? If you've got two people, one person on the inside pushing on the Velcro and... Yeah, if you've got the option and you've got two people there ready to help you, then definitely it's nice and easy. Yeah, so if you just push those poles out now, Leash will be looking good. Also, you've got to remember with these, these grey flaps on the bottom here, they're water deflectors. So you want them all pointing out, so the water comes down off the canvas, across the deflector, and then onto the ground, directing all the water always away from your inside area. So little tip guys is basically these spreader poles in here, um, if you've got some bad weather coming along, some winds, anything like that, or you just want to put a little bit more structure to your tent, great idea to actually grab these spreader poles and pop them into the middle of the annex area, but also up into the tent area as well. So the easiest way to pop your spreader poles in, because obviously your structure is quite high, is just grab the highest pole first and pop that into that one, making sure that you've got your wing nut not into the canvas, obviously. Bring it down to where you're wanting to put it on. Pop it in, and then that way you're actually at the height where you can actually pop up, reach this, wing nut it off, keep it nice and straight. As I say, it just adds that structure through to the tent um, and it's also going to assist in the weather as well. Now just have a look at the size of this area. It's hard to believe that this is an entry level hard floor camper trailer. Just look at the amount of room you've got. You've got a heavy duty poly floor. You could sleep probably, I don't know, 10 kids in a row in swags in here. Plenty of room to swing a cat. You've got a great size fridge slide, heavy duty canvas, close weave, all your stitching sealed. Oh, I just can't believe how they make these for the money. You just get so much bang for your buck these days. What an awesome camper trailer. Well, that's how you set up the Explorer. Thanks for your help, Alicia. Not a problem. It's a nice, simple camper to be able to set up. It is, especially with two people. You know, mm -hmm. if you've got two people, it's going to make your job a lot easier, but you can certainly do it by yourself. 
Yep. Um, definitely one of my tips is use the winch when you're opening the camper up just to allow that ground to seat properly and just so the camper trailer doesn't hit the ground really hard. Yeah, definitely. I think one of my, my biggest tips would be just take your time the first time. You know, obviously watch the video, um, go through any of the uh, pole diagrams and whatnot. Definitely. Don't be too hard on yourself if you're, you're not able to do it in a certain time frame. Don't put time frames on it. Just enjoy yourself while you do it and you know, it'll all come together. And take a photo of your pole diagram. <laughs> Don't just keep the piece of paper. Take a photo of it, load it on your computer, then you've got a copy at home. Always drop your ends so your canvas can drain off nicely. Mm -hmm. um, and mark your poles. Alicia was saying she uses electrical tape so you can have a colour system or you can just have a Nico pen and write numbers on the poles in a couple of different spots in case one gets rubbed off but you just need to know what pole does what and once mm -hmm. you get used to it and you know those markings yeah, then definitely. you'll be whacking these things up in no time but like Leash says don't be too hard on yourself the first time yeah. and set it up at home. You've got to yeah. set it up at home anyway so you can season your canvas. Set it up Hose it down, let it dry in the sun, then your canvas is ready, and then you're ready when you go camping. Definitely. And then you can escape with confidence. <laughs>